Hi everyone, this is Chris Hoffman and here are three tips to make your grooves more funky. When I think about funk as a musical environment, I think of drummers like Clyde Stubblefield and Jabo Starks with James Brown, John Blackwell with Prince, Stanley Randolph with Stevie Wonder, Pita Janjic with Corey Wong, just to name a few and the list goes on and on. But for today's lesson, I chose three ways how you can modify your regular drum grooves into funk grooves in the musical style of Tower of Power and their drummer David Garibaldi. And to start off, we take a bass drum and snare drum figure like this one. And we will play 16th notes on the hi-hats on top of that played hand to hand. Step one is to break up the hand-to-hand -hand pattern using the Garibaldi diddle and that is a sticking that was shown to me by Mike Johnston when I took lessons with him. David Garibaldi first heard it in the early 17s by a drummer named Peter Poe in the band Redbone and the Garibaldi diddle is basically a paradiddle variation. Right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. And between hi-hat and snare drum, the Garibaldi sticking sounds like this. And now we add our bass drum and snare drum figure to that. And what I personally like to do with the Garibaldi sticking is to make use of the hi-hat flick. I don't know if that is an official name. If you know better, please let us know in the comments. For me, it makes sense to call it the hi-hat flick because I flick my wrist to the hi-hat and move my ghost notes from the snare drum to the hi-hat underneath of my regular hi-hat hand. And that is a finesse and sneaky way to play fast hi-hat grooves with the least amount of effort because you keep the distance short between snare drum and hi-hat. And it also adds a nice little texture to your hi-hat grooves because you hit the hi-hat at the edge and play, play it with the shoulder of the stick. Here's an example how this sounds like. So step two is to use dynamics. And I don't mean the overall volume of our plane, but the internal dynamics between bass drum, snare drum and hi-hat. And in funk music, the hi-hat is played the softest from these three voices. And you can think of it as a, or think of it on a dynamic scale from one being 
whisper quiet and 10 being very, very loud. The ghost notes on the snare and the hi-hat are at a three and are played with the tip of the stick. Hi-hat accents and right cymbal accents are at a five and bass drum and snare drum accents at a eight. So ghost notes three, hi-hat accents five, kick drum, snare drum eight. And let's talk about the right cymbal just for a second. The accents can be played on the bell with the, with the shoulder of the stick and the non-accented notes can be right can be played right next to the bell with the tip of the stick. And now let me play the hi-hat and right cymbal part of the Garibaldi Did Lonely using dynamics. And you can notice that the mixture of soft and loud notes follow a specific dynamic shape. Every note is accented and every second note of a 2 16th note grouping is accented as well. And now let me play four bars of groove without any internal dynamics whatsoever, followed by four bars of groove on the hi-hat and the right cymbal, so you can hopefully hear the difference. So I hope you could hear the difference and by paying attention to your internal dynamics, your grooves get way more and more dynamic depth, which leads us now to step number three, which is to displace the backbeat. Now step three is to displace the backbeat and I will leave the first half of the groove as it is and I will displace the second backbeat by a one sixteenth note. And this will change up our Garibaldi sticking, but I came up with a solution that you hopefully like and I think it still feels and sounds quite familiar because it follows the sticking rules, if you will, from the first half of the groove. And these rules are no more than two notes in our right hand, no more than one ghost note with our left hand and no ghost note before and after the backbeat. So this is how the displaced groove sounds. So I hope you got some insights from this lesson that the choice of your sticking, your internal dynamic mix and the displacements of your accents are key elements for your personal groove design, no matter the genre you're playing in. And this was an example in the musical style of Tower of Power and their drummer David Garibaldi. And please let us know in the comments below whose drummer's groove design or fill-in concepts we should break down for you. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.